Today I'm making a follow-up video to a video I made recently about why we should stop calling people who harmed us narcissists and stop living in judgment of them. As the Lord said, judge not lest ye be judged. And also that video is about releasing ourselves from a critical spirit that may be harming us when we fall into judgment of the people who wronged us. And so today I felt the Lord put it on my heart to create a follow-up video about how we then protect ourselves from evil people, because I could already hear the questions before I even recorded that video. You know, as someone who fell into patterns of abusive relationships for a very long time, I could not really extricate myself from that cycle until I met Jesus. And even many years ago when I had first waken up to the fact that I was in an abusive relationship and had ever been abused because I was completely dissociated and that was just my normal, which it is for so many of us. The therapist I saw at the time who wasn't a Christian cracked open a Bible and read me 1 Corinthians 13 because I want to talk about living in judgment versus living in discernment by the Holy Spirit and how we can protect ourselves that way. Because what Christ taught me when I met him, when he revealed himself to me two years ago, was what or rather who love truly is, pure, unconditional love. And up until that time, I simply didn't know what love really was. So that was one of the most important things, right? And 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4, is a perfect sort of image of Christ himself, or as some people call him, love himself. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustices, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And so one way we can measure up whether we are in a truly loving relationship with someone or not is if they match that. And of course, human love is never going to be perfect, but for the most part, that's what love really looks like. And so the deepest key to protecting ourselves from people who are deeply evil, behaving in evil ways in this world is being filled with the Holy Spirit and receiving his discernment, receiving knowledge and revelation of Christ and who he truly is. And as believers, we aren't often taught this, but we're not to live by our own fleshy will, our fears, our judgment, our anxieties. Not that it's wrong if we're feeling any of those things, we're just learning. But we're here to learn how to live by his indwelling spirit, by the life he gives us that is dwelling within us now. As Christ said to Nicodemus in John 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And down in verse 5 he says, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right, and we all become children of God, as is written in John 1, when we receive him, when we receive his Spirit and are born from above. And then that spirit begins a process of transformation within us that conforms us to the image of Christ, to that beautiful image of love that he is. But what the world tells us is that we need to judge the people who harmed us, call them narcissists, diagnose them with personality disorders, and that's how we protect ourselves. But friends, I did that for 10 years because that's what that therapist taught me next and it never actually worked. In fact, it kept me in bondage to those people and it kept me trapped in the cycle of abuse. And so the other aspect of how we protect ourselves from evil people is by not turning them into false idols and worshiping them. Now we may not even realize that we're doing this. And so if we're still caught up in that cycle with those people judging them or in bondage to them, it's because something happened where we put them in the place that only Christ is meant to be in our hearts. We are taught to idolize love in this world, but until we know who love truly is, that can be deeply problematic. And we may not have had caregivers who loved us properly as children, who themselves were never properly loved. Right? It is Christ that makes us loving and good. It is the work of his spirit within us that transforms us into more loving people over time. So don't judge yourself wherever you may be at with that. Because turning our judgment and criticism inward on ourselves doesn't help change us either. And so as long as we keep that person on a pedestal and idolize them the way that they do the same thing to us, 
we're going to remain in bondage to them. But when Christ is in his proper position in our lives, that becomes impossible. And so how we do that is by building deep fellowship and intimacy with Christ. And we do that by being in communion with our Lord, individually and collectively as his church, his ecclesia or assembly, where we are revealing him to one another. Right, because the kingdom of God is Christ living in us and revealing himself to the world through us as individuals and as the assembly. And if I've learned anything from my journey with Christ is that he wants to spend time with us. He wants us to spend time with him, not just doing all the things that Christianity tells us we have to do to be good Christians. I made a video about that recently, I'll link below. But just slowing down and spending time loving the Lord, we can just focus on our love for him in our hearts and let it begin to overflow. Let his love meet us and see where that leads us. Prayer is good. Reading the Bible and the scripture is wonderful. But if we don't just slow down and take time to listen, it's pretty much impossible to hear the still small voice of his spirit within our hearts. Because the loud voices of our fear and of the systems of this world that are trying to pull us away from him will always dominate. And so if you need some help and guidance doing that, I've created a free ebook, Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love, that will help you assess where you are at and what you can do in order to shift and change, draw nearer to the Lord and rest in his love instead. Because when we maintain that strong connection and develop a deeper and deeper intimacy with Christ, his spirit dwelling within us will give us that discernment because in comparison to him, evil people become deeply obvious. And so I encourage you to take this word to God and to also just spend some time deep in communion with him at some point in your day. I like to do this in the morning and also in the evenings. So I just wanna pray for you that you come into deeper communion and intimacy with the Lord, that he reveals himself to you more and more and more so you can catch a glimpse of his beauty of his truth and of his love and that can lead you and guide you in this life. May you be filled with his spirit and his discernment and may he protect you always. In Jesus' name, God bless you and keep you friends. Amen.